The science of astronomy sprang from necessity, the need of the ancients to measure time, to know the date. The movements of the moon, the sun and the stars made it possible. A calendar was set by the cycles of the heavens. Today, astronomy means discovery, the quest to understand the nature of all that exists, to comprehend the universe. To observers of old, the Earth was at the centre of the universe. Today's stargazers know how insignificant we really are. The path to that self-awareness is the history of astronomy. Observatories are as old as civilization. This Mayan pyramid in Mexico was a line to register the sun at the equinox. Stonehenge in England dates from 2900 BC. And from even earlier, this great tomb in Ireland. It's so constructed that only on the shortest day of winter can sunlight shine directly inside. Even today, we measure time by the stars. It's done with a series of pulsars. Their spin is used to regulate the beat of the most accurate atomic clocks on Earth. From more than 30,000 years ago, timekeeping by the moon. A remarkable record carved on reindeer bone. Day by day, it seems to show the phases of the moon. A graphic record of that calendar in the sky for the intelligent prehistoric observer. The point on the horizon where the sun rises alters every day. It's the combined effect of the daily rotation of the Earth and its annual orbit of the Sun. To ancient horizon observers, twice a year the sunrise point would virtually stand still. These times they recognized as midsummer and midwinter, fundamental markers in measuring the seasons. As the sunrise point began to move again, they knew the season was on the turn. The world over, the earliest observers used the sun as a calendar. In this Native American cave, an arrow of sunlight indicated midwinter as it hit a calibration on the wall. Much older is this burial mound in Ireland, a Stone Age marker of the winter solstice, and so constructed that the sun would shine directly in here just once a year. It happens on December the 21st. On a grander scale and younger vintage, these are the famous temples of Abu Simbel in Upper Egypt, twin markers of the rising sun. But Stonehenge in southern England is the most famous of all, a megalithic observatory par excellence. Its key alignment is here, from the centre of the stone circles, through the heel stone beyond to the midsummer sunrise. A moment of awe, the summer solstice from the heart of an astronomical computer that's been spot on for 5,000 years. So complex are the stone configurations, it's been suggested Stonehenge could predict solar eclipses that degree of sophistication is unlikely. All the same, several of the oldest stones surrounding the monument provide interesting alignments. These two mark the setting point of the midsummer sun. Intriguingly, they also mark the setting point of the midwinter moon. To the ancients, the sun and the moon were easily predictable. Wandering stars were not the bodies we know today as planets.
Planets appear to wander because, like Earth, they're orbiting the Sun. They don't move in unison with the background stars. The Greeks saw the universe like this, a series of concentric crystal spheres, all in motion around the Earth. Within each sphere was set an orb, the Sun, the Moon and the five planets known at the time, those wandering stars. The outermost sphere was the realm of the background stars. It was a neat model, but it didn't explain the eccentric movements of the planets. Why, if they were carried in crystal spheres, did they sometimes go backwards? The Greek astronomer Ptolemy had an answer. He worked in Alexandria in the second century and firmly believed that the planets orbited Earth. He accounted for the wanderings with the idea of epicycles, little circles described by the planets around their main orbital paths. It was a clumsy notion, but it fitted the observations. On Midsummer's Day each year, the sun would shine directly down a well at Aswan in Egypt. This was known to a librarian called Eratosthenes. He worked several hundred kilometers to the north in Alexandria. There, at the same time, a column cast a shadow. He wondered why. The reason is the curvature of the Earth. As sunlight falls vertically on the well in Aswan, it's at an angle in Alexandria. Geometric calculations gave Eratosthenes the circumference of the Earth. He'd noted that the sun was off vertical in Alexandria by one fiftieth of a circle. So, by multiplying by fifty the distance between Alexandria and Aswan, Eratosthenes got the globe's circumference. He was within a few percent of the right answer. It was 200 BC, 1700 years before Columbus set sail. The brilliantly accurate observations of Tycho Brahe and the sun-centered theory of Copernicus led to the 17th century breakthrough of Johannes Kepler of how the planets orbit the sun. Kepler's calculations had Earth and the planets moving in slightly elliptical orbits. The theory of Ptolemy, which had persisted for 1800 years, was finally disproved. And Kepler's work held good for comets and moons. Galileo backed the idea and was condemned by the church. His use of the telescope, however, marked him as the first great telescopic observer. At the end of the 17th century, Isaac Newton not only split light into the colors of the spectrum, but he worked out the theory of gravity. Newton showed how objects launched from a mountaintop would fall to Earth through gravity, unless they had sufficient velocity to put them in orbit, like the moon around the Earth and the Earth around the sun. In the 19th century, William Herschel built a big telescope and began the mapping of the sky. He was the greatest visual observer. The 20th century brought huge instruments that probed far into the heavens. The astronomy of deep space had begun. The past hundred years have revealed the nature of stars. Astronomy has unveiled the great collections of stars we know as galaxies. How there are millions and millions of galaxies, each containing billions of stars. And how galaxies form great strands that float in the emptiness of space. Far from being at the center, astronomy has shown us to be a mere speck in the cosmos.